Push the button. Okay, now I'm on. Do you have a little light? See, it's got to have a little print there. Push the button. The gray button. Oh, the gray the gray button. button. There we go. Okay, sorry. It just takes us a moment to figure out the technology. We're good. Are you good? Maybe. Am I on? Oh, oh there yes, we go. Woohoo! Do you have something you wanted to say as we get I, this going? I do actually have something. Oh, these lights are really bright. I can barely see you guys out there. All right. Yeah, because um, you're all in the dark down there. <laughs> all right, guys. Welcome to Teen Retreat. Are you guys excited to be here? Wait, 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 wait. What? That was really... Are we at Teen Retreat? Because they just whispered. You they asked did. if they were excited. They, they went, yeah. I think they're all about to fall asleep. <laughs> okay, is anybody glad to be at Teen Retreat? Yeah! Oh! There is someone out there. That makes me, I'm so much <laughs> You guys happy. are awesome. All right. all right. So we have a small group this year, which is actually really amazing, because that means we all get to know you, and we hope you get to know all of us, and um, I'm really excited about it just because Teen Retreat is my favorite event. I love Teen Retreat because you guys are fun. She loves that too, but this is her favorite. This is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have just a couple announcements we want to make just here. A few. Most yeah. of them we're going to make to the staff. Yeah, so most just, of them we're going to make to the staff, so we're going to split groups in just a minute. Um, the first one is, did anybody notice that there's a few people with the food bracelet? Or with a bracelet? It's either red, bright, bright green, colored. You or did. Good gold. job. All right. All right. So if you are, if you signed up as either vegan or gluten-free, you need to make sure that you have one of those bracelets so that you can go through line so that they know to give you vegan or gluten-free food, which they have in the back. And to add to that, if you didn't sign up for the gluten-free option, please don't take it because they order based on how many people sign up. They order that much. And so we, we had some real challenges at leadership retreat where <laughs> so. some people went hungry. Um, but anyway, so please, if you signed up for it, enjoy it. And if you did not, don't. Is that clear? <laughs> I mean, we still want you to enjoy your food. Just, just enjoy your food, not their food. Just enjoy your food. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> okay, the other thing is, um, and this is more for the staff than for the kids, but if you left your car here, especially on the roads here, we need you to move those vehicles because that ends up becoming a um, real problem if we end up having ambulance, fire, any services like that. So we need to keep you, that real clear. You know, it's really kind of weird to me to hear you say that. I, I've worked here for a lot of years. So like for 20 plus years, we have said, oh, move your cars because the garbage truck or the ambulance, there's never been until the last time we were here. Until leadership, we had the ambulance come. It's the real deal. So please more don't leave your cars there. More we really wanted. Yeah, we don't need to do that again. <laughs> Let's not right. do that. This so the other Let's thing... not get the ambulance here this time. No. Do you guys hear me? Please. Right, that's right. <laughs> We want, no, we want promises. <laughs> so um, the one, the last one that I think we wanted to share here. Yes. This one's for you teens, okay? So um, a lot of you teens brought new counselors who are new to teen retreats, so we need your help. Um, you need to stay with them. That's your job, okay? So you may have thought it was their job to keep track of you. It's actually the other way around. So teens, you need to stay with your counselors, and they need to know where you are. So we do have some things this weekend where you may be splitting up here and there, but they should always know where you're at. If we just say, hey, where's your, where's your guys? Where's your girls? They should know exactly where you are because you're either with them in the same space or they know because you told them we're going to be over here and you are there. And you have to be able to see your counselor at all times. Unless you're what? Unless you're in a group That's true. Unless That's you're in a group activity. That would make it difficult. In just a moment, in fact, that would be difficult. Unless somebody has x-ray vision. That then, was a nice transition to what's next, right? <laughs> that is you a must great see your transition. staff member. Way Thanks, to go. Estee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we right now are going to split up the group, but we're going to split it up between teens and all the staff. So at this moment, all of the staff, whether this is your first time at Teen Retreat or you've been coming here for 20 years, I'm going to ask all of the staff to leave and go up to the cafeteria. However, wait, 
there's one caveat I have to let you know. Because all of your staff are gone, none of you can leave this room. And we're actually going to have guards on the doors. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's the deal. Okay, staff, ready, set, go. I'm going to introduce you. No. No. Okay, teens. Has anybody been to a Teen Extreme event? All right. Okay, there's a couple of them. Okay. Does anybody know who this is? <laughs> this is Estee Pummel, and we're actually related. Yes, through marriage. We're related through marriage. We are. We really are. It's an exciting thing. Anyway, Estee's an amazing person. She's come up with a really fun game for you guys tonight. So I'm going to leave you in her hands, and I'm leaving. Bye, Amy. Bye. And then guard the door after I leave. Oh, and by the way, kids, if you keep your eye on your counselor, you're driving nuts. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Truth. All right, is there somebody? Oliver, can you change the lights for me a little bit? Let's turn up the lights in the room and turn down the spots. Please, so I can see. Oh, much better, thank you. All right, we're gonna play a game. And this game is called Clumps. And for this game, we're going to do it tonight, sorry, Caleb, without talking. Because I don't know if you'll be able to do it without talking. We'll see. All right, so yes, that is a challenge right now. No talking. But because I want to see if you can do it without talking, not because I don't like talking. Um, all right, so the first one is I want you to get together with everyone who is wearing the same color shirt. So you're going to have to get up and walk around. <laughs> shirt or jacket if you don't want to take your jacket off. That's fine. You do have to get up and walk around. Hey, I hear a lot of talking, though. Can you do it without talking? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Why don't you go out this way, Daniel, with Roy? Um, all right, next one. Wait, are you, do you have someone in same color? All right. Good job, you guys. All right, the next one is gather with everyone who has a similar length hair. <laughs> You're gonna have to get up, walk around. Similar, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. All right, you guys are doing good. Except you're not getting up. <laughs> okay, good job. All right, next one. Now again, no talking to, you can say things like, hi, what's your name? But you can't ask about it. That's the challenge part. Find everyone who was born the same month as you without talking. Let's see if you can do it. You're going to have to walk around. Okay. 
I see some, yep, yep, people are getting there. I still see some people looking. Wait, no, no. You guys are doing good. All right. Now, let's see if you can find everyone who was born the same day day of the month. So I can explain that a little bit. So for example, my birthday is August 30. I'm going to find everyone who was born on the 30th of any month. Can we talk? No. Not about it. Good job. You guys are doing pretty good at this. Did you not find anyone? Still some people hunting. Are there still people hunting? Daniel, might have some luck up here. Anybody still looking? All right. Did you find them? Yeah. Oh, got it. Sorry. I thought I saw a different number. Are we ready for the last one? All right. So the last one is you're going to find everybody who was born in the same state. But here's... I have a suggestion for how to do that without talking, if you want it, or do you want to figure it out? So here's the idea. If you're born in Idaho, you do like you're holding hot potatoes. If you were born in Montana, maybe skiing. Washington State, maybe it's orcas. Oregon, maybe it's beaver tails. What if you were born in Connecticut? In Connecticut, everybody else who's not one of the western states look like you're looking through binoculars because you're trying to find somebody else and you guys can be together. Um, California, surfing, Alaska, shoveling snow, and everybody else looking through binoculars. So see if you can find somebody else who has the same thing. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's cheating a little bit. <laughs> Good thinking, though. <laughs> All right. How about what year you were born? See if you can find what year you were born. Everybody was the same year. Wait. 
You guys are pretty good at this silent communication. No, I think they're younger than that, Lana. <laughs> Seventy-seven. <laughs> All right. Looks like. Are you still looking? You, you're your only one. Okay. <laughs> Good job, you guys. All right. So now you can talk, and I'd love to hear. Was that kind of a struggle? No. <laughs> Not for you, Caleb. You love to talk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you saw some differences of communication styles. Yeah. That's true. Can you think of any relating things? <laughs> that was pretty good thinking. Um So, you guys can talk. I would love it if you exchange names with each other and get to know each other a little bit.
And we're literally in this little tiny lake. Which I did this little like Airbnb. We kind of like, They must have a lot of questions. Is that plastic? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's real right now. I did not get in that car. It literally was this long and big. And I'm like, I did not know so my experience with Florida big orange on the beach. I don't know what's worse. It would be pretty boring. Iguana. Maybe. That's why you Maybe want to The iguana is slow. <laughs> this one was not. Out. This one was not. He was like, ching. And I'm like, okay, I no, no. I said, and so from then on, I'm like, I need you to pull the car out so I know it's not underneath there, and then I'll get on on the street. Hey, did you look under your bed? No. If all that you're worried about is the iguana, you're good. That's why I didn't want to really do it again, because... I have them do shirt color, hair, length. <laughs> um, but are they, are they, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> and then month of hair. All right, you guys, here come the adults. I know, now it's time for song service. <laughs> Do you want the mic? Sure. For tonight, it's just that one. <laughs> so we'll, I'll, we can go through it um, afterwards, and I'll show you what we did for the other. So there are some other changes. Um, no, no, I think the other one is that um, you should have gotten the... Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Did you... You put the... All the songs are in there. Besides confidence, you put... That here? Oh. Is yours on? Hit the button once. Now go ahead and talk. Ollie. Excuse me. I'm going to sneak in front of you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Can you guys unsnap it?
Our next song will be Captain. Never mind, we're going to be doing Blessed Be Your Name. next song will be Captain.
Our last song is our theme song, which is Confidence. Um, and if I could have you guys all stand, please. You guys may be seated. Okay, so we're going to be talking about prayer wall today. Um, so basically what prayer wall is, is you grab a paper, which will be provided over there on the table, and you'll write whatever prayer request you want to us to pray for. And every night we will grab the prayer request off the cross, and we will come up here and pray for them. Yeah, and the prayer requests that aren't prayed for up here will be taken back to the conference so that they can pray for them. So some of you might be wondering why 
um, we do this. Uh, sometimes it just helps to know that you're being prayed for and like that you've got that support of people praying for you and it it just helps. So if you would all bow your heads and we'll pray. Dear Jesus, please help Casey, Colin, and Annabeth to heal from COVID and be okay. Uh, thank you that this person, John, is okay. Thank you that Mr. Winger is okay and back from the hospital. Please help this weekend to be fun-filled. Amen. All right, there we are. Yeah, the, the real Pastor Richie is sitting right there. If you, if you wonder about that big bear, if you haven't been here, um, just check out the bear, and you especially have to look at one paw, and then it will all make sense. So this evening, I want to introduce um, our speakers. And typically, um, it has been our custom that we come together. We invite somebody who we think is really going to connect and that you're going to enjoy. And I'm not sure, um, but I just, I just have been thinking and watching and saying, you know, I wonder if maybe, maybe there's another way that connects better with this generation. And so this weekend, staff, we're doing an experiment. Teens, we're doing an experiment. So um, on the evaluation on Sunday, you're going to tell us if that was better or not. Um, and we're not necessarily critiquing individuals, but an approach to communicating, right? So we have three people that I'm delighted to introduce to you. And um, I asked Pastor Larissa to partner with me. And I said, I want you, I want you to find people who represent um, maybe different perspectives on the world, maybe different places that they come from, um, and that just... That just, just there's some richness and diversity in the group so that we can have a conversation about issues and have different perspectives um, show up here where we all get to enjoy being a part of the conversation. So that's what's going to happen this weekend every time we come together. And I'm excited. Uh, Pastor Saul pastors two churches, kind of in three churches. I'm sorry, I'm totally undercut you there, man. Uh, to, to all his people who are watching online, it, it's at least three. Some days feels like five. but uh, right. <laughs> So uh, we're delighted to have him here. And, and your district is, I know roughly where it is, but I don't know, do you have Mattawa? Herm, you're down in Hermiston. Oh, I had you further north. Okay. So down in the Hermiston area and where else? Hermiston, Pendleton, and a church plant. Okay. So I actually used to pastor in Pendleton, so you're covering some of the mild stomping grounds there. Pastor Larissa, many of you know, she was our speaker for the Outreach Fair last spring. Um, Woohoo! Pastor Larissa is pastoring in the Tri-Cities at the Richland Seventh Amos Church. And, and then we have one of my favorite people, Pastor Jason, who is way up in Bonners Ferry. Now, some of you may think that's in Canada, but it's not quite. Uh, it's, it's at least not yet. Uh, we still claim it. And Pastor Jason's up in Bonners Ferry with his family, and uh, we're just delighted. And, and what I want all of you teens to recognize is that all of these pastors kind of shifted their schedules for preaching and left their churches and came here to be with us. So that's a big deal. And I hope you'll welcome them in loud Pathfinder fashion right now. <laughs> Turn the lights on. I don't know how much, I don't know if it's more scary with it dark or with it light. You're not scary people, are you? 
Okay. He's scary. I'm not. I, he's scary, though. <laughs> so, as Pastor Richie said, uh, we partner together on this adventure, and he asked me to come along with him, and I sat on this for a few days, and I was like, Lord, where am I supposed to go with this? Like, where, what am I supposed to do? I work now mostly with young adults who have kind of surpassed this teen experience, and so I was like, I don't even know where to start. So I was talking with my friend, Pastor Erica, and I was like, oh, what do I do? Like, do you have any ideas? And she's like, why don't you just ask them? Why don't you just ask the teens what they want to talk about? Very exciting. So one thing that we did, and I'm going to move this down because I cannot see past people. Um, one of the things we did was a few months ago, we sent out a survey um, to a lot of the teachers, the Bible teachers, a um, couple of the bigger churches, and we asked them, we said, hey, we have this survey for your teens, and it's for a teen retreat, and we want to know what they want to talk about. And so that survey that you got in your packet that you filled out tonight, um, those were the questions we asked. And so a lot of what we're going to be talking about this weekend was taken directly from those questions. Now, the cool thing about that is I do want to mention um, is that we had you guys fill it out because you're actually here, right? And so we're going to be taking those, we're reading through them, and we're actually adjusting some of our topics because of what you guys wrote down. So I want you to know this weekend is for you. We're here for you, and we're excited to be with you as well. So one of the things that came up a lot was asking questions. We're asking questions. We're asking you to be open and honest. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about tonight is we're going to be talking about asking questions. And we're going to start with some people who in the past have asked questions and maybe didn't get answers. Some people who asked questions and did get answers. but. You'll see where it goes from here. So one of the first stories that uh, the Bible records in uh, like the like old, 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 old story, like maybe before the flood kind of story, is a story about a guy named Job. You guys know the story of Job? Yeah. So Job's this guy. He's wealthy. He's got like seven kids and he's got lots and lots of property and servants and whatever else. And, and for reasons he has no idea why, in one day he loses all his children, he loses all his, his livestock and, and wealth and his servants, except for a couple that report on it. For some reason he doesn't lose his wife. Um, we, won't, we won't cover that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why Satan left that one, I'm not sure. But anyway, so he, he loses all this stuff. And then, and then he comes back again. Um, and, and just a little while later, he ends up like with all these sores and you know, boils and stuff on his body. So he's in ex extreme pain and discomfort. And, and uh, I mean, it, it, when, when somebody gets, when somebody experiences hard stuff, is it okay to ask questions? Is it okay to have some doubts? Some like, what in the world is happening to me? Yeah, and you find Job in, uh, in Job 3.11. He says, why didn't I just die at birth? I mean, why, why didn't I just come out of the womb and expire? That would have been better than what I'm experiencing right now. And uh, we, we don't have a lot of questions um, about suicide. <laughs> um, but there is a big question that some people come, that come to some people's minds as they experience hard things in life. Like, why me? Why this? What's going on? And it's okay to ask those questions. A little bit later, he even asks God a question, or well, not so much, he's not so much asking God the question as wishing that he could ask God the question. Um, you ever talk to God and feel like he's not responding? Like the crickets in your room are, are 
louder than God is. Sometimes Job, I say that I'm leaving a voicemail. Leaving a I voicemail. I feel that. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I just left God a voicemail. All right. <laughs> He'll call me back. Yeah. I, I talked to somebody or I called somebody recently and it said that their voicemail was full. You probably tried I couldn't even me. leave a voicemail. I think you tried calling me, right? <laughs> Your voicemail is full. Yeah, don't call me. <laughs> well, okay, so Job, he has this experience and... Um, and he's, he's angry with God because he feels like, I mean, his, his friends are even telling him, you did something wrong, God's punishing you. And his wife is saying, you should just give up and die. And, uh, and he, he comes face to face with this. And, and he says, I wish there was like a judge that could come between me and God. I wish, I wish God was human like me so I could have a conversation with him and a judge could tell him to get off my back. I, I wish I understood this. And, and you get to the end of Job's experience in the book of Job, and the Bible never tells about an answer to Job. I mean, we know the answer. We know what's going on. There's this whole thing in heaven, something beyond Job, but Job never knows. Or at least we don't find out that he knows. What we find out is that God comes down and he says, Job, you haven't done anything wrong. So that was nice. He, he answered that question. And then, and then he says some amazing things about himself. And I think that's, that's really kind of disconcerting in a way, because not all of our questions are going to get answered, and also comforting, because you have the presence of God. And I think at the end, like, the thing that I love about the story of Job so much is that, you know, he asks these questions, and God never answers them, but he's willing to put himself out there to ask those questions in the first place. And he says, God, I have questions about my circumstance. I have questions about my life. And I want an answer. In fact, at one point he says, I demand an answer with God. He says, I demand to know. And he asks some really hard questions. Because at the end of the day, God is big enough to handle it. He's big enough to handle those questions. What's interesting about the book of Job is that Job never actually gets the answer to his questions. Uh, normally, like if my son asks me something, he, he persists until he gets the answer. Uh, and even though Job was persistent, uh, he, he never got the answer. Like we, we never, he never found out why. At least the biblical narrative doesn't tell us why. Um, and when we look at other people in, in Scripture, not just Job, uh, we look at Abraham, we look at Jacob, we look at even Jesus. Like they all had moments where they approach God and in, in various ways, ask the question, why? Like, why is this happening? Why? And some of them got answers, some of them didn't. But what we realize is that none of them got answers at the beginning. Like, normally God asks something of them before God even explained why he's asking them to do it. Uh, case in point, Abraham. Uh, Abraham left his home, left absolutely everything, his family, uh, before God even gave him a promise. So he didn't even have the promise yet, and he had already packed his bags and moved. Uh, and then after he had moved, then God's like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, there's this promise. And little by little through the years, God makes some more and more promises, but God doesn't unload all the answers to Abraham right away as soon as he takes off. And, and Abraham, even though he has the promise that he's going to have a kid, he asks the question, how? How am I going to be a father at 100? Right. Yeah. And we even see his wife laughing. Right. Yeah, we see yeah. uh, we see even Abraham taking situ uh, circumstances in his own hands. I mean, we see all kinds of things. But the point being that God uh, didn't unload all the answers immediately. Um, and he didn't answer every single question either. Um, and part of that, yeah, is uh, the, the willingness, like being honest and uh, respectful. Right. With God learning that, hey, this is a journey and we're gonna journey together to discover kind of why these things are happening. And that's what we're gonna be doing this weekend is we're gonna give lots of opportunities for you guys to ask questions, to be real open and honest about, you know, things that you have questions about, things that you want answers to. And throughout this process, throughout this journey together through this weekend, um, I'm hoping that you'll be willing. I mean, you've already taken that step by filling out the survey. Thank you. I'm hoping that you'll be honest. 
But we also want to demonstrate what being respectful looks like um, in conversations, even when we disagree. You may not know it, but the three of us, we have had many conversations on these topics, and there's a lot of things we disagree on. And we're all pastors in this church. <laughs> and so, you know, it doesn't mean that we have to be unkind to one another. It doesn't mean that we can just treat each other rudely because we don't agree. Um, and that's something that we really hope to demonstrate what that looks like and hope that you also will do the same. In fact, we're going to ask you that when we have these conversations, when we talk and when we converse, that you approach this weekend with a kindness and a respect um, and a willingness. And uh, Larissa, I think it's important that we disagree. Absolutely. If, if everybody Absolutely. thought the exact same thoughts, um, then we wouldn't have we wouldn't have people that create new things, right? You, you have to have the willingness to ask questions to explore something deeper. And everybody comes at things from different perspectives, from different histories, from different experiences. And th those are valuable. And uh, to recognize that value and be humble to be willing to learn from somebody else is really important. Me and, me and Jason agree all the time, huh, Jason? Yeah, mostly they it's don't. the rest of the series. <laughs> they do not. Literally. That's why I'm in the middle. Every, uh, every, <laughs> Just for no, the record. This, this is strategic. Every other is like, I disagree. I disagree. Yeah. Um, piggyback off of like what Larissa is saying, uh, I think humility plays a big part of it. Like realizing that maybe, maybe, maybe I could be wrong. Have you guys ever had that, that thought cross your mind before? No. You no, right? That tweet. Like, everyone else is wrong, am I right? But I'm never wrong. Like, I always see things the most clear, you know, I, no. Uh, it's, it's a humility to be like, hey, perhaps I could learn something. Perhaps somebody else has a different experience, a different perspective that, you know, could be to my benefit um, to learn from. I read a tweet this week, someone posted on Instagram, and it says, too many people are looking for reasons to say I was right. Not enough people are looking for reasons to say, maybe I formed a conclusion prematurely. I'm going to read that one more time. Too many people are looking for reasons to say I was right. And not, many, not enough people are looking for reasons to say, maybe I formed a conclusion prematurely. There's going to be topics during this week. There's going to be times in which you believe you have a conclusion about a certain topic that we're gonna be talking about. And I just ask that you consider, maybe you formed a conclusion prematurely. And we're asking that to be open to the possibility of not being wrong, but maybe needing to adjust your perspective. One of the questions that keeps coming up that we've seen a lot is this idea about um, how do I have um, uh, a staying faith, you know, how do I have this experience with God? Um, how do I know that I have an experience with God? Or There's all kinds of ways the question has been asked. Um, but one thing I, I think that is important is asking questions. Um, in fact, God says in Isaiah 118, come let us reason together. He says, engage your mind with me. And, and I think that, that we struggle with, is it okay to have doubt? Yeah, so doubt is a topic that is fast becoming one of my favorite topics. And in the English language, if you were to say someone doubts you, it's considered a negative thing, right? It's considered to be um, negative, a bad thing, like, oh, you shouldn't do that, especially when it's applied to God or Jesus. Like, oh, you shouldn't doubt God. You shouldn't doubt um, what Jesus is doing. And while there are times in which that is true, one of my favorite words in the Bible um, for the word doubt is diacrino. And what diacrino means is it means to investigate thoroughly, to like thoroughly examine something, to examine the evidence. And it's, that's not the word for all the words in doubt in the Bible. There are several words for doubt, but that's one of them. And it's in the New Testament, and it just says over and over, we use the word doubt in the English translations, but diacrino means to investigate thoroughly. You have this thing. Investigate it. Find out, like, is this 
one way? Is this another? Like, just really thoroughly go through it. That, that contrast, <clears throat> I think, is really significant in our faith walk because you think about Job's experience, and Job has these really hard experiences, and he asks these really hard questions of God. You can imagine him out there with his fist in the air saying, why God? <laughs> What's going on here? And yet, he, he experiences this terrible stuff, and he says, after he loses everything, he says, I came into the world naked. I'm going to go out naked. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. There, there's a a, a question, there's a struggle, there's an investigation, but, but he doesn't say, um, I'm done with you, God. It's not disbelief, it's investigation. Um, one of the things that we had talked about also is engaging, um, engaging in the minds and not just taking it as it is, meaning there's, there's a process of growth that happens, like there's an assimilation. Sometimes, have you guys ever had to chew on something in your mind for a while? No? Has that never happened to you guys? Uh, all the time, right? You're like, you hear something and you're just like, I gotta take a second, you know? I just, like, what does that mean? You know, it happened to me all the time in school. Don't worry. Um, math, math and me just did not get along. But there are things that we chew on and sometimes we chew on them, not just for a day, not just for a moment, but it's, it's a process, it's growth. Uh, things that maybe doesn't exactly make sense right now, but the more I engage with it, the more I put my experience into it, the more I'm journeying with God with it, uh, pretty soon I get clarity about it. Maybe not to the fullest extent I want, but it's, it's a journey, it's an aspect, uh, and not just taking everything as face value. And not everyone is on the same point in the journey. There may be people who have, you know, are just starting a journey about a topic or about this question that they've been chewing on. And there may be other people who are halfway through because they've spent more time in this or they've been exposed to this for a lot longer. And so everyone is on a different place. And just because you've arrived at a conclusion or a space where you feel comfortable doesn't mean everyone else has. Maybe that would be a good segue into kinds of questions. Absolutely. There, there, there's lots of questions that we can ask, and some questions that we have are perfectly appropriate for us to explore and answer right here in this context. And there's ones that aren't really applicable. Um, for example, Saul may ask, what's for breakfast? He probably will ask that later. I heard it was cinnamon rolls. Is that? No. You already asked. No, I know. And, then on, <laughs> and, uh, and on Sunday, we're having chilaquiles, so. <laughs> but yes, I asked. Like, I'm <laughs> so some of these questions are not applicable to the conversations we're going to be having here. They may be applicable this weekend. I apologize if it's not cinnamon rolls again. Okay? <laughs> Guys, I think we all need a double check, all right? <laughs> so there's some questions that, that they're, they're good to ask, but maybe in a different context. Um, and like, for instance, there's, there's questions that we might have. I mentioned suicide earlier. And if you have stuff that you're struggling with and, and you're actually having suicidal thoughts, we have a counselor here. And if, you, if you'd like to talk to somebody, we'll, we'll hook you up. But, but that's not a conversation we're going to have in, in this setting from the, from the front. Um, and, and there's other questions that uh, just we, we really need to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, so we're going to be available all weekend. Pull us aside. One of your counselors, if you're comfortable with um, bringing it up to them. Um, like if there's a question you have that, that's really personal like that and it needs a personal response, please feel free to ask. So that brings us to uh, this box. So this box is gorgeous. Thank you, Rachel. Um, when I brought it, this was a shoe box. Can we just give her a round of applause for a moment? <laughs> she, she also did all of this. So yes, very beautiful. Um, I was gonna leave it as is, so. <laughs> This is much prettier. So um, this box is a box in which you will be able to drop your questions that you have during the weekend. Yeah, thank you. Insight. So we'll, we'll take these out, but there will be pieces of paper next to it um, and pens. And what we want you to do is we want you to go ahead and close it. We want you to <laughs> see we disagree. <laughs> 
I'm just here to, to, to hold things. <laughs> so you're going to wait, write your question on. It can be about absolutely anything. We give you the freedom to write absolutely anything. Please keep it to the topic of our theme within the struggle, talking about struggles or things that you have questions about um, and stuff like that. So you write your question on and you drop it in here. Now, as you can see, this box is not locked. For the sake of this to work, please do not open this box unless you are one of us. We can open it, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, I'll but we just ask that you just drop it in um, for the privacy and the sake of others. Um, let that be left alone. But this will be out for you guys to uh, drop questions in, obviously not during this time period normally. Um, but like at other points, if you have a question or you want to take a couple of those back to your room and write some questions on them and then drop them in, um, we're actually going to be pulling from this box and having a live answer time um, where this is going to be totally on the spot. We pull this question and we're going to talk about it. Speaking of which, you may have noticed when you registered um, that there are certain topics that we plan to talk about this weekend. Um, tonight, we're talking about asking questions. Uh, tomorrow, we're talking about um, like personal struggles and your walk with God. Um, we're also going to be covering topics related to sex, sexuality, gender, the LGBTQ plus community, things like that. Um, and then also, our last topic that we'll be covering is the future of the church. Now, if you remember earlier, we mentioned that you guys filled out those surveys. I can already tell you from the surveys we have collected that we are pivoting one of our topics slightly because of what you guys said. A lot. We're pivoting a lot. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pivoting we quite a bit. We have a disagreement about this. We do have a disagreement <laughs> about this. Jason, you've been outvoted, all right? It's, it's done. We, we said it. You we're know? supposed to have the polite part up here. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Don't worry. Jason, I disagree. There you go. <laughs> so we're going to take some time tonight. And, and, um, and Saul, I love you. I, I love, love you, too. Know. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, your, your turn. <laughs> you guys good? We're good. We're good? Yeah, we're good. We're, we're good. good. We're, we're good. good. <laughs> So we're going to take some time at this moment. Um, we're going to pass the papers around. And what I would like you to do, if you have been like heard about these topics and you're like, I'm so excited to come and I can't wait um, to hear about this. Or if you have top, like questions based on what we've talked about so far, um, what I'd like you to do is we're going to take some a few minutes now and we are going to pass those papers around. We're actually going to have a live Yes, we're going to have a live question and answer tonight, now. From your questions. From your questions. Every, every appropriate question is valid, okay? Yes. Please ask Oh, relating. we get to define what appropriate is. So ask whatever you want. We'll just not answer if you have an inappropriate question. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I do want to mention is I, we've kind of skirted the topic a little bit, but not every question is going to be answered. Mm -hmm. I'm just putting that out there. Not every question can be answered right now, but not every question will be answered. But we will try to answer the questions we can. And it would probably be helpful to mention this too. Coming from various perspectives, we, we don't necessarily have all the answers or the wisest of answers. So, so please take our answers and like, like Saul said, chew on it a bit. Explore it more. Play some background music, Jason. Hmm? The violin, you play the violin, right? Oh no, don't, you don't want my violin. I, I lent it to somebody else anyway. Wow. <laughs> I'm a. How do you want to collect these? So when when you've written a question, just uh, just come up here and drop it in the box. Who's this? Who's, it, who's is this? It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw. I saw. that.
You guys are a good looking group. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself. You married, kids? You, you want me to tell me, tell about myself. I, I am married and I have a son and a daughter. My daughter's right here. Aww. Her name is Adeline. She, she is painting with stickers. And, and you play the violin, right? I do not. How, how, many, of you guys, oh, how many of you guys would love I, to hear Pastor Jason play the violin? And like the right, fiddle. Right now. So, uh, Richie, we're going to add like a five minute special music <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, no, it, I mean, the, the only thing I could play is actually a fiddle song. Yeah, so, yeah. Hold down. S Sunday you morning. Okay. You got it. You know, while we're at you it, you know it. who also plays an instrument and plays it rather well? Saul plays the piano. <laughs> I, it's been years. Yeah, it's been years. I saw you play it last month. <laughs> okay, so if, if I actually play my violin for you, then there is no excuse for any of you to do something crazy in, in front of others. Because I, I've, I've been playing the violin for like four months, which means I've played it like 15 times. That's no, enough I, time. That's enough. I, I, know, <laughs> I know a song I could play. <laughs> Pastor Saul, tell us so. I got, uh, I'm married, got a son, three dogs. Yeah, so I almost got a fourth, but my wife was like, no, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. What are your dog's names? So I have a, a black Labradoodle. Her name is Thea. I have a, a white golden doodle. Her name is Luna, and I have a Sharpay. Her name is Emma. We gave our dog people names, so. Hey, I get it, I get it. Yeah, yeah. They all end in uh. Thea, Luna, Emma. Mm? <laughs> Are you deciding who's answering? What, uh, I don't know. Some of these questions are for Google. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, I know what it says now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually from Yakima, but yeah. But I live in Hermiston, you know, but I'm like associated with Pendleton. Uh, the roundup's pretty fun, but yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Good questions. Are there any others? Please bring them forward. You, he, 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 we've got some writing. Okay, good. Larissa, Larissa. I almost called you Larissa. Larissa. No, no, I was no. teasing her Issa. early and called her Issa, that, but it's Issa. with an I. Larissa, what about you? Um, I currently live in Tri-Cities. I have two cats. I have a 10-year-old. His name is Cooper. He is a lynx Siamese, so he looks like a gray tabby, but he has the most beautiful blue eyes out there. And then I have a nine-month-old cat. Her name is Violet, and I got a message from my mom who's watching her this weekend, and apparently she caught her first bird. So I've got a hunter on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have two cats, Cooper and Violet. They are buddies. They like to chase each other around the house. It's good times. So um, if I can't read it, I'm going to give it to Larissa because she has a special skill. Okay, there's, there's one of y'all out there, and let me just say, <laughs> I can't read your writing. I can read most of it, and then it gets to an important word that really determines the sentence, and I'm like, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> but I do gotta say, my years, at, I was a high school teacher, 
I taught Bible, culinary, and dynamics of flight, and um, <clears throat> that those years are coming in clutch right now. I just gotta say, some of your guys' handwriting. So filtering these on the fly is fun. There are a few of these questions that we are planning on answering. Um, like if, if there's something that's a, a general topic that we're going to cover, for example, the future of the church, we're going to be talking about that on Sunday morning. So we're going to maybe shift some of those questions to be answered then. I personally think we should put them back in the box and just draw just them randomly. Just draw them randomly? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. I really do. So we're just not going to, we're not going to worry we're about gonna, it. We're not going to, no. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Want to fold them up? Here we go. Fold them. Shake the box. Okay. So we have to fold them in half? Yeah. All right. We're fold, uh, folding them. Here, you hold it. <laughs> I'm not a very good box holder, am I? Yeah, I got the box. You're promoted, Saul. You know, you can fold them multiple ones at the same time. I did. And it didn't work very well. There's, there's one that's not folded. There we go. I'm done. <laughs> May the odds be ever in your favor. <laughs> <laughs> ah, a good friend of mine is having suicidal thoughts. What can I do to help? Hmm. Hmm. This is a great example of one of those questions that I think needs to be a one-on-one -on -one topic. That doesn't mean we can't give a little bit of advice. Yes, but which is why we're, we're going to hand the mic right over here. We're not professionals. Hi. This one is. <laughs> Please say your name. My name is Estee. Oh. Um, they all met me earlier because I tortured them. Um, so <laughs> some of you missed out on the torturing. Um, so what you can do if you have a good friend who's having suicidal thoughts is let them know that you really care about them and go with them to talk to somebody that you can both trust. Just realize I don't have that on up here. Um, talk to somebody that you both trust, like a counselor or a teacher or um, someone at school, a parent, a pastor, yeah. Duh. <laughs> um, and encourage them, listen to them non judgmentally, so that means. You're not telling them you shouldn't feel this way or you're wrong to feel that way. You just listen to what they have to say, but let them know that you care and that you're there. Um, and also, get help. Don't, don't just try to handle it by yourself. Yeah. Good advice. Thank you. My turn. Wait, 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 wait. I need another line. Ah, well, it made the odds ever be in your favor. Read it. Read it. What uh, are <laughs> <laughs> what are chiquitas? Chiquit, chiquit. Okay, who wrote this one? Who wrote this one? <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, it's, it's, it's something that's going to change your life, and I can't wait for you guys to try it. I can't wait for you guys to try it. I don't, I don't want to spoil There's no, Imagine heaven, slice it up in a food, and that's it. That's it. So, so a fun fact about Saul is um, Saul's kind of a food snob. Not no. going to lie. No, 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 no. If, look, if Saul says some, it's good, then I'm, look, I'm look, look. looking forward to some it. People, well, some people eat from necessity, like and me. other people eat because they enjoy what they're eating. Like I'm right. him. I'm right, you know? So I, I love to enjoy what I'm eating, you know? That's it. So, makes sense, right? Thank you. Thank you.
I've been getting... We still don't know what tequilas are. <laughs> oh, um, so it happened in <laughs> slices, slices, literally. Okay, right. No, no, no. Uh, in a, there's many ways to do it. You can do it with chips or uh, dried, like, uh, not dried, but like tortillas that have been fried a little bit into little pieces. And then there's like either a red or a green sauce that goes over it. And then fresh cheese on top. Sometimes there's an egg. You know, it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. Heaven, heaven, you know, but... Sorry. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about the one I pulled says, hello, Pastor Larissa. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, it says, how does God decide the world through us? We, we could guess at what that means. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what is, the question is getting at here. Um, the word decide makes me think about like, like uh, the whole idea of predestination or like what God, you know, yeah, God knows the future and how does he allow us to be involved with choice and all that. But that's, that's a big wild guess. Can you read it? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read actual people like handwriting in a long time. So <laughs> <laughs> it's got this side of the world. There. Yeah, I'm not. I'm... There, so, so this... There, there's something about asking questions. And can we be honest here? Sure. Yes. No. Okay. So <laughs> yes. I ask questions that don't make sense. And my wife will tell me this. Um, and, and what I find is that the more I ask the question, the better my question becomes. You ever type something into Google and get terrible results? And you're like, that has nothing to do with what I'm wanting to find out. Yes. And so then you, but you read through it and you're like, oh, there's a word. Let me try that again. And so you do the search again to ask a question a little bit differently. And, and suddenly things start to come. So... This is a perfectly legitimate question. I'd love to understand it better. Um, maybe ask it in a, just a little bit different way. Tweak the question, and we'd love to answer it. Good answer. I agree with you. Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> I've passed. I've passed the test. Hmm. I think we covered that one. Let's... Yeah, well, we tried that one. Or we did one. How old are you, Jason? <laughs> First of all, his nickname is PJ, Pastor PJ. Jason. So can you guys say PJ? PJ? There we go. I told you that was going to be my You're goal good. this okay. weekend. Yeah, <laughs> he's already succeeding. So <clears throat> I, I, am, I am 41 years old. So, yeah. I, I found out today that, that I'm older than me, Harry, yes, <laughs> <laughs> which makes me feel mature, <laughs> but I, I, am, wish. I am the old guy up here, yes. so that, that's, that's like my, my like group, you know, we have the female, we have the, 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 the person of color, and we have the old guy. <laughs> All, all the check marks. All the check marks. We got them. You we thought got I was joking when Pastor Richie said diverse. I mean. Good, good job. Good job. I think this is another one about... Turn it around, it helps. <laughs> it's asking what your birthday is. I want to know... We're going to type our answers tomorrow because <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it looks like Q I S I T N. Like a question. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, what's your birthday? Um, it, but it says, Are you birthday? Are you, you know, birthday? I'm in, I, it's a translation. It's legitimate. It's a uh, legitimate question. Fun fact my birthday was this month on January 7th. And I had a really cool birthday present this year. Um, I was ordained as an elder on my birthday. I did not get the invite. but You did get the invite. Yeah. You just didn't show. Yeah. I was busy. <laughs> With church. There we go. It's Let not like finish. you're a pastor. I know. Friday All right. Night. Last one. All right. What is for lunch? Wow, I did not <laughs> ask this one. 
I'll let you know tomorrow morning. <laughs> I don't know. I texted uh, George, but he didn't answer back. So, oh, he did. Let me see. <laughs> Okay, it is confirmed. Cinnamon rolls are for breakfast tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. So while I had a lot of fun answering these questions that are more get to know you, I do want to ri- remind you that the questions in the box are to determine what we talk about, um, about struggles. So please use them as so. If you have questions about us, just ask us. Or in fact, ask one of the other people like, if you want to know about Saul, ask us. We'll tell you. And if you want to know about Jason, or um, should I say PJ? PJ? Ask us. What do we want to, what about you? Don't ask. <laughs> ask, ask, ask Richie. Ask Richie. <laughs> ask Richie. Don't ask Richie. Richie. <laughs> oh, ask Richie, not Cheryl. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, Cheryl and my mom are best friends, and she's known me f- since I was one. So don't ask Cheryl. Ah, so, Cheryl. <laughs> so, Larissa, do you mind if I wrap up with a Bible verse? Absolutely. Okay, so um, Saul was... <laughs> you are my favorite person Comedians. <laughs> Comedians. She so, said, are you going to wrap it? Like, <laughs> Wrap it. So... Saul mentioned this idea about like persisting. We don't get the answer the first time necessarily. Sometimes it takes a while. Like um, if you are 14 and you ask God, Lord, who should I marry? It might be a while before he gives you an answer to that question, right? So sometimes persisting in asking the question is a good thing. And, uh, and, And there's a verse, Jesus makes this promise. He says, knock and the door will be opened. Seek, and you will find. Uh, it doesn't mean that, that you're going to find immediately. But as we explore things, we'll get a better understanding. And I think some things we, we won't know until heaven. Like Job, I'm guessing he died not understanding that there was a whole great controversy happening in heaven between God and Satan over him. And he won't know those details until heaven. So... As we explore these questions this weekend, let's keep in mind, God wants us to ask questions. He wants us to search. He wants us to explore and investigate and be curious. He he wants us to do some work as we get to know him and get to know who we are and how we should relate to our world. Um, and, And those questions, even if they don't get answered immediately, he still cares about. Yes, I agree. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. the end <laughs> well thank you guys this is night one this is the start of what I expect to be a very fun weekend and so thank you for being here thank you for coming and thank your staff let's give our staff a round of applause <laughs> Amy back to you Okay, so I was told one time that if you come up here with a clipboard, that you look super official. (laughs) Okay, so um, really quick, I have one announcement to make, and that is that quiet time tonight, is it, am I on? Am I on? Did I not have it up to my face? Okay, that made me look a little less official. Sorry about that. Got the clipboard. Don't know how to. Here, I'll put the clipboard down. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Anyway, so quiet time tonight is at 10 o'clock. Currently, it is 9.06. So you do have time if you would like to. You can go sit around the fire in the cafeteria and hang out and spend some time together. And um, you can go to your room. Just go with your staff member. Please go with your staff member. You guys have to keep track of your staff. I know they wander and they leave and it's, it's a struggle. I understand that. I'm sorry. You guys have a task for the weekend to handle your staff. I understand. What am I up here? Now, Lana has a public service announcement. <laughs> 
Okay, so does anyone know what the number one way to prevent transfer of disease would be? Shout it out. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. So this weekend, let's make sure every time after you touch your face or blow your nose or go to the bathroom that you wash your hands, okay? And if there's, um, that's like the primary, like one most important way. Um, if not, if you not have, don't have access to um, soap and water and scrubbing, and like I taught my kids when they were little, she's now 19, but um, when they were, you know, younger than her, <laughs> I would have them sing happy birthday to themselves. So just a little reminder. I'm sure you guys have heard this a lot, but sometimes even adults need the reminder to wash your hands, wash, 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 wash your hands, okay? So we don't want to, like, go home with a present that wasn't handed to you in a bag. Does that make sense? And then if you need to use um, a hand cleaner, we've got it somewhere. Everywhere. Okay, so look for somebody in this blue shirt um, or Richie or somebody that you know that's an adult. And if you need some, just ask them. Okay? <laughs> Richie, you're officially an adult. You're an now. adult. Oh, yay. <laughs> so we really need to practice the special song that you sing when you wash your hands. And that song is Happy Birthday. Did Larissa leave? No, she's right here. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> enough. Come on. I, it's great. Happy birthday in 21 days. And, and. It's the, the 21st anniversary your birthday. of your birthday. Oh, totally. 21 so, day anniversary of your birthday. Okay. All right. Come on, everybody. Help us. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday. Pathfinders, attention. Prayed rest, prayer attention. Dear Lord, thank you so much that we get to come together and spend time with each other and learn more about ourselves, but especially that we get to learn more about you. And please send your Holy Spirit to be with each and every person here and bless us through this weekend. Please bless our pastors and all of the staff that are here. In your name, amen. Pathfinders, attention, at ease. I'm not going to say seats. You're dismissed.